Maybe. Good. Okay. Tonight, thank you so much for making it here. T t tonight, we're talking about thyroid. Now, we're going to do, a, I've been working and working and working to get this lecture, you know, tied up in, you know, the half hour. And, and I realized it's impossible. It can't be done. You can't talk about the linkage between the thyroid, the adrenals, the pituitary, the liver, the function of the lung. You can't explain the entire T3, T4 ratio. You can't explain this stuff. It's impossible. So what I'm going to do is give a rough overview of how the, the thyroid works because you really can't isolate the organ. And that's where modern um, medicine, and, and remember, this, this is the dark ages. Okay, it, it truly is. When I was asked my mission, at, I was on this um, Holistic Chamber of Commerce panel, they said, what's your mission? And I, and I thought about it and I thought, well, really, my mission is to explain that 2013 is the dark ages. This is when we have an ignorant, I mean, the, four, the leading cause of death in America is medical care. The fourth leading cause of death is the right drug at the right time and the right dosage for the right disease. And we're going to these supposed healthcare professionals that are, are causing death. So, I mean, that's, that's foolish. A patient just sent me this cartoon, and I, I like it. Did you know that kids in North America are forced to sit in classrooms all day? If they move around and get excited or make too much noise or given drugs to keep them quiet, their main source of exercise is playing video games and most of their food is fake and full of dangerous chemicals. It's terrible. We should get donations more. I, 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 I know, you know. Okay, so, so we're going to do rough facts over the thyroid. Because I know a lot of people have said, well, the thyroid problem, it's, it's linked to, you know, I mean, all these different conditions. It's a bad thyroid. That's, that's not true. These are, these are rough facts. Um, women over 50 are at risk of thyroid. Want to know why? Hormones. Hormones. Hormone balance, but let's be a little bit more specific. We're going to talk about thyroid binding globulin, and over 99% of thyroid is bound to a certain type of protein. Estrogen will bind to that same protein. So if estrogen levels are high, that's why it's high in that age group. Wow, that makes sense. Okay, so now we look at this, and we've got to start thinking. Uh, I mean, they're saying 4% of the population, and then, then you say the general population is almost hyperthyroid. So how can we have 14% of the population that's either low or almost low? What's wrong with America? What's wrong with the human animal that it can't regulate a function of a gland? Okay, that's foolishness to begin with. I mean, to even say that stuff, it's dumb. It's like, you know, all my fingers work, but this one just isn't working right. Okay, do you think it's a problem of the finger, or do you think that there's something else going on? So then we look at this. Um, it tends to increase in age. So if we're exposed to more poisons over a longer period of time, do you think that that's going to have a negative effect? Yes or yes? yes. See, have, have you ever heard of homicide? <laughs> homicide? Homicide? That means a man killing somebody. Okay. Have you ever heard of pesticide? Yes. Pesticide. That, that means we're killing a pest. Okay. So, so what happens if you take a little bit of poison that kills a pest, if you take a little bit of poison long enough, what do you think that does to a human being? Same thing. Same thing. It's going to kill you. Okay. So, so we see that the older we get, the more toxic exposure we have, the more negative effect it's going to have with the thyroid. And it's interesting, the top selling drugs in America were thyroid drugs until the antidepressants took them over. <laughs> but you're going to also find out that the same course, the same reason that they're there is there. Now, we could spend a year going over the endocrine system. And the endocrine system is interesting because it's broken up incorrectly. They say like the pituitary and the hypothalamus and the thalamus and, and then this communicates with the adrenals and the adrenals communicate with the testes or ovaries. and I mean, all of these things have their own separate function. That's why we have a renologist or, it, you know, that's why we have, I mean, all of these different specialists and then they go to the endocrinologist. None of that stuff makes sense because no organ functions independently. It's all connected to each other. And that, that's because it's impossible to explain every detail. So we have to, you know, just, just go over it. The system's broken. If we're looking how the modern system is, and this is why you've been told that you have a thyroid issue or you have a bad heart 
It, you can't have that. I mean, to blame a bad heart because the arteries are, are starting to get atherosclerosis, that's foolish. It's not a bad heart. It's bad either nerve supply or blood supply. You're not going to have a bad thyroid unless you have toxicity or bad blood supply or bad nerve supply or, or the interconnected organs. So the system is not correct. This is going to be one of the triunes that you're going to look at. And the triunes, there's a lot of the interconnected communication that we can map out that's easier. So the, the adrenal pituitary thyroid axis, this is, this is one simple way to look at it. And remember, this is an entire year project that we're going to pack in about 45 minutes. We're probably going to do a couple of these lectures on the thyroid, so this is a real rough overview. I'm not going to, I am going to even show you the chemical structure of T3 and T4, but you know, we're not going to get really into it. TRH, thyroid releasing hormone, it's released by the hypothalamus. So think of this, you got this organ in this brain that's stimulated okay, by sensory input. And it's also sensing one of the main hormones that are released by the thyroid. So if T4 is low, then the hypothalamus is going to tell the pituitary to release TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. Now the pituitary, so the, so the hypothalamus has all these sensors going up to it from the nervous system and it's going to tell the pituitary to, to tell the thyroid to release thyroid stimulating hormone, okay? Now, however, under stress, now remember, the hypothalamus is just there. It's just a machine, just a computer. So it's getting all this input in. If there's stress, physical, chemical, or emotional stress, it's going to re release corticotropin releasing hormone, okay, it's a CRH. It's going to tell the pituitary and the pituitary is going to tell the adrenals to release cortisol. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone. Stress hormone decreases TSH, or the thyroid stimulating hormone. So, so, to, so to walk you back through this, normally the, the hypothalamus is going to tell its sense to see if thyroid hormone's low. If it's low, it's going to tell the pituitary, and the pituitary tells the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. Okay? However, under stress, the hypothalamus is going to tell the pituitary to not tell the thyroid to work, and it's going to actually tell the thyroid to or increase cortisol production and decrease TSH. Okay? I, I know it's complicated, but look at stress is going to negatively affect, it's going to decrease thyroid function. Does, it, does that make sense? Okay, so, so and, and I'm going to go over this more. But now, this right here is an x-ray, a before and after x-ray, of somebody who had Parkinson's. Now, Parkinson's is a neurologic degenerative condition. And we can help Parkinson's, except 9 out of 10 Parkinson's patients, they had, a, they had a, an incident of trauma before the onset. So when we look at this, in fact, any neurologic condition, what do they tell people with MS? What do they tell people with Parkinson's? They say, don't exercise. It's going to be bad for you. You're going to get tired. I know. That's like, you know, you're exercise intolerant. Anybody in here exercise and get tired afterwards? <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's like really foolish because the only way to help this is to get more stimulus up the nerves and then that gets more control of the brain to the body. And this is before and after and we took her from a walker to um, a cane. So that's a plus. Now, now look at this. And, and hold in the back of your mind that the blood tests are nearly worthless that are being done. They're nearly worthless. And I'm going to show you that they actually change the values, and the values still are not, not right. So you can go in, get a blood test, and it's going to say normal, but you may have fatigue or loss of energy. You could have a blood test that's going to show normal on the thyroid, and you could have depression or weight gain or hair loss. I mean, all of these things... Don't look at it as the function of a thyroid gland or the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus. Or It's not a one-organ thing. You've got to look at this as all the, in the entire metabolic processes of the body are not functioning correctly. Infertility, carpal tunnel syndrome, the, the LDL cholesterol. Cholesterol is going to be increased. And you're going to see how vital cholesterol is and how foolish and ignorant it is 
to lower cholesterol. In fact, I'm, I'm doing a blood pressure book now, and it ought to be done in about a month, month and a half, depending on, you know, because it, it's really complicated. I'm thinking of calling it Arrogance and Ignorance, Americans Control of Blood Pressure. I know, I, I kind of like it. Okay, and when you look at this, um, heart rate changes, blurred vision, I mean, this is all, that's hypo, hypothyroidism. Okay, I know, what hump master? Okay, yeah, so, so, so hyperthyroidism, okay, it means that the metabolic processes are increasing, generally, generally. Okay, now hot, unexplained changes in weight, bulging eyes, and these are all rough. Could you have bulging eyes and not have hyperthyroidism? Yeah. Could you have all of these conditions and not have a change in thyroid? Yeah, so it's, it's a real rough, rough guide. The problem is in the cutie cut, cutter medicine that we're doing, if you have these symptoms and you have this test, you have this disease, you get this drug. And that's the problem. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, to, to, to go over everything, boil it down to the, the, the therapies for thyroid are in a, incorrect today. Now, if you're given a hormone, because they'll say, what blood test should I take? Guess what blood test you should take to test your thyroid? None. None. It doesn't matter. Okay, you're comparing it to, to something that's not accurate. Even the most accurate medical doctor in the world will say the blood test is only 15% of a diagnosis. So that means 85% of the diagnosis has to be wrought from other means. So when we look at this, if you are told to take a hormone, <clears throat> it's going to start to shrink the gland. I mean, they can give testosterone cream, it's going to shrink the testes. They can give um, progesterone or hormone replacement, it's going to have negative effects down the road. Because they're, they're giving a hormone for an end result. And they're not thinking about something like this. And I mean, this is how cortisol is produced. And when you look at all the different cycles in the body of all the different organ systems, Virtually everything the adrenals make begins with cholesterol. Now the adrenals are vital for making stress hormones, glucocorticosteroids, minocorticosteroids, sex hormones, everything. And they use cholesterol as the precursor to everything. So if you have somebody with high cholesterol, does that mean that they're having a problem with hormone production? Or does that mean they have bad cholesterol? Okay, I know, I know, It's because it, when, I, when I bring up truth, it sounds really stupid. So, so, thyroid hormones, okay, which aren't really from the thyroid because they're converted in virtually every organ, function the metabolism of everything. And you're going you're gonna to learn this because I'm trying to bring you from, from medical world, which is ignorant, that says the thyroid hormone, if you have bulging eyes, if you have, you know, this metabolism, you have this disease. Okay, and that's not true. Uh, thyroid hormones work on virtually everything in the body, affect protein synthesis, neuronal maturity, uh, helps with long bone growth, increase sensitivity to catecholamines, that means it increases for stress hormones, stimulates vitamin, vitamin metabolism, leads to heat generation. So, so these hormones have a lot of different effect in the body. It's virtually every metabolic effect in the body. This is why when somebody is, you know, like 600 pounds and say you have a bad thyroid, no. It, it's only responsible for about 10%. So if someone's 400 pounds, a bad thyroid or a slow functioning thyroid or a hypothyroid would be responsible for about 40 pounds of that. Okay, so it's only about 10%. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Okay, but I'm going to try and boil it down. Um, the thyroid produces several different items. And the two main ones that it produces is T3 and T4. T stands for? Thyroid. I know! It's like too easy. Okay, now the number has to do with iodine. Because everything the thyroid produces has iodine next to it. So T3 actually has three hunks of iodine attached to it. Guess how many hunks of iodine T4 has? Good, enough said. Okay. Okay, now, I mean, and it's really pretty much that simple, but when we look at this, T4, T3 is really active, T4 is not really active. Okay, so, so what we want is we want, we, we're going to measure these two. See, T4 has to be converted to T3 to work, okay, to work better. 
And so there's over 20 times the amount of T4 than there is T3. So we got a, a ton of T4 floating around in the system, but the stuff that really, really works is T3. Okay, does, does that make sense? So we got to get the T4 converted to T3 to get all those metabolic processes. So where is it converted? It's interesting, we're going to go over where it's converted to that because it's not just there. But right now, let's just understand, thyroid makes a bunch of stuff. We're mainly going to check T4 and T3. There's 20 times more T4 than T3, but T3 is really, really active. Okay, it's like the three to five times more active than T4. Now, the tough part is the things that can cause a decrease in thyroid function. Okay, it's going to be PUFAs, um, polyunsaturated fatty acids. It's going to be heavy metal exposure. We already know that, that when the stress, when cortisol is produced, what happens to TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone? It goes down. So under stress, under adrenal stress, physical, chemical, or emotional stress, the body tells the thyroid to slow down. Okay, so when we start looking at neurotoxins, chronic illness, enzyme deficiencies, all of these can simulate a low-functioning thyroid when it's really just the body's response to stress. Now, when we're doing lab tests, and this is where it gets really crazy, because you're going to be told, oh, here's the lab test. That's not Moses walking out of the, you know, Mount Herod, you know, with, with, with you know, Mount Sinai tablets, okay? A blood test is something that changes all the time. What they're mainly testing for is bound T3 and T4. Now, that's 99% of T4, 99.5%, actually 99.9% .9 of T4 is bound to this protein carrier. That means there's this little protein carrier that carries the thyroid hormone, almost 100% of it. And so what a lot of people will do, they'll look for bound T3 and T4 and, and free T3 and T4, but that's usually not done. Now what happens though, and this is the frustrating part, they're generally just looking at bound T3 and T4. Now remember, if females over 50 show a lower functioning thyroid, now you've got this protein carrier that carries that T3 and T4 to the tissue. Estrogen will also bind to it. So it's, it's kind of like a you know, motorcycle. It can only have one rider on it. Okay, so if you have excess estrogen, that's going to be bound to that, and it's not going to be bringing the T3, T4 to the site. So you're going to appear to have a low-functioning thyroid. But there's a lot of other things that can bind to it, and you're going to find out that it's toxicities that you're exposed to that's binding to those protein carriers that's causing a simulated low-functioning thyroid. Now, the, oh, yeah, I love this one. Anything that affects thyroid binding is going to give you a low th functioning thyroid. So we're talking 99.9%, that's like almost 100, okay, is bound to this protein. So anything that affects that binding is bad. And when we look at it, things that affect it, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Okay, this is PUFAs. Okay, this is canola oil, safflower oil. This is in virtually every packaged product. Okay, this is, and we're not even talking the negatives from genetically modified, but this is almost every packaged product that has this, it's binding to that, negatively affecting how the thyroid molecules get to the, the organ system. Okay, so this means you cannot let corporations cook for you. It's, it's just sick. Then we look at it, high blood pressure medications. You're talking a population now that 45% is taking a blood pressure drug or is told to take it. Okay, I'm telling them they should take it correctly and then they get off of it. Okay, starvation, acute illness, steroids, all of these things are going to simulate a low-functioning thyroid. So anything that binds to it, estrogen binds to it. So we have to look at not just, because what blood test will show you? It's, it's not. If you have a thyroid panel that tests for T3 and T4, well, what's your estrogen levels like? What's your diet like? Okay, is your diet high in canola oil? Is that going to give you a, a simulated low-functioning thyroid? Do you eat fast food once a week? Do you, have, do, you know, do you have a diet high in commercial meats, which is loaded with estrogens? So this is where we got to start thinking a little bit beyond. Because we can all go out and get a low thyroid test. You know, I could take you out to McDonald's every day this week. <laughs> no, I like people. <laughs> Now, the, I love this. The American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, uh, they changed the levels. 
So before 2003, they had a reference range. Now, when you get a blood test, and it doesn't matter for the thyroid or blood test for anything, you've got what the test is, you've got a reference range, and then you have your values. Okay, this is for everything, whether it's red blood cells, eosinophils, basal fills, whatever. Do you know where they get the reference range? Out of the clouds. <laughs> you get the reference range, and each lab has different values. It's changed about three times a year from 100 people without a diagnosis. Now, did I say 100 healthy people? No. Did I say 100 people who eat meat once a month? Did I say 100 people who exercise daily? Did I say 100 people? No, these are 100 people without a diagnosis. And then you're given that range. This is why it's silly. Because when you look before 2003, 0.5 to 5. That's a huge reference range. So this means if you have 0.6, you're okay. If you have um, 4.9, you're okay. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, it's 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 not accurate. That's why the the whole the whole linking your entire therapy and your entire identity to a blood test it's not accurate. What happens if you go into a blood test and you eat fast food for a week that's loaded with estrogens? Or what happens if you if you were worried? because you had a death in the family or you just got divorced or you know you just got that new hat with sunglasses and you were concerned about your appearance <laughs> okay <laughs> you look at stylish boy okay so 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 that stress what is cortisol which is secreted by the adrenals what does the cortisol do to thyroid function it's going to lower it so it was too big a range so they decided to lower it who? I don't know. Moses came down Mount Sinai. Okay, now it's 0.3 to 3.4. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's not accurate. You know, age, it's, it's just a snapshot in time of what your body is. I typically tell patients, look, this is just a snapshot in time. Don't be worried unless you're half of the low number or double or triple the high number. Okay, and then change your lifestyle factor. Go and get another one if that's what you really want to do. Now, thyroid, adrenals, and infertility. I don't know if you've seen that wall back there, but there's a whole bunch of kids. Most of those kids came from women that were supposed to be infertile. Okay, they're not. Those now, okay. But one of the tough parts is what do they check for for infertility? There's a link here. Thyroid, adrenals, and infertility. First off, hypothalamus. It tests the blood, and it gets all the sensory input through the nervous system. It tells the cor cor corticotropin-releasing hormone, the pituitaries, to increase cortisol under stress. Now, if it increases stress, that's going to slow down TSH, or the thyroid-stimulating hormone from the pituitary. It's also going to slow down the conversion from T4 to T3. Remember, ton of T4, it only works when you convert T4 to T3. Well, stress is going to slow down that conversion. It's also going to slow down the thyroid. So stress is going to massively decrease that, causing a low th thyroid. Now, women under stress, they're going to decrease progesterone, progesterone levels due to adrenal fatigue. So chronic stress is going to cause the adrenals to kind of wear out. Now, is a good way to, to explain this, has anyone ever hit their thumb with a hammer? No. Yeah, hurts like the dickens, or stub your toe, okay? Okay, I'm talking acute pain. Now, that hurts a lot, right? After a little bit of time, what happens? Pain goes down. Okay, and then you might notice the pain goes up. You know, maybe because, you know, you know, you rested or hit it or something. So the pain is going to increase and decrease its intensity. And the reason is, is because you've got these adrenals that produce a, um, a pain reliever 40 times more powerful than heroin. Okay, it's called endorphins. It's fantastic. I know. <laughs> no, but when you think about it, now they can't always produce this at the same level. Okay, because they run out of their building materials. So you're going to have an increase in, in hormone production, an increase in pain reliever, a decrease in symptoms. Then the, the organ needs to build back up, and then you're going to notice an increase in symptoms until the organ can start reproducing it. So under chronic stress, 
the organ gets fatigued out. And this is what we see a lot, okay? So it's called adrenal fatigue. Now, that causes, um, the precursor to progesterone is DHEA, and that's used to metabolize cholesterol to make it estrogen and progesterone. Because remember, we, we're talking the adrenals, they produce everything, every glucocorticosteroid, menocorticosteroid, and sex hormone. That's what the adrenals do. They use cholesterol as the raw material to make that. Under stress, they're not going to be able to get the raw materials. So then you start looking at this, oh my gosh, poor adrenal function is going to decrease testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, it's going to decrease everything. So that's infertility. Now, is this a smart system or a bad system? Don't answer yet. Okay. Um, did you know that in World War II, there were concentration camps where they put a lot of people in a very stressful situation and they killed a lot of them. Now, do you think birth rates went up in those camps or down? <coughs> down, because of extreme stress. Okay, now what's interesting is after, after the survivors got out of those camps, there was a massive population increase. Massive because the bodies were under less stress. Okay, so, so you got to know, in order to correct this problem, we got to start looking at stress, particularly to, to correct uh, thyroid. Now, iodine is a key element in the thyroid. Key. Why? T3, T4. What's the T stand for? Thyroid. What's the number stand for? Iodine. T3's got three iodines, T4 has four. Okay, so now, if your diet is deficient in iodine, you're going to have problem building something that has three molecules of it and four molecules of it. Now, iodine deficiency is also linked to breast cancer. Now we come into the link between bread, thyroid, and cancer. We started, okay, now when you look at iodine, it has a very similar chemical structure it's actually called a halide, to bromine, fluorine, and chlor chlorine. Okay, now, chlorine we're using in our water system. So if you're drinking um, tap water, that's going to look really similar to your body to iodine. So if you have chlorinated water and you're drinking it, or if you're bathing in chlorinated water and it's getting in your system or you're brushing your teeth with chlorinated water, this is going to bind to those sites and the body's going to think it's iodine but it can't build healthy, healthy thyroid out of it. Have you ever heard of fluoridated water? Yeah. I know, well, well, I know this is gonna, because these YouTubes are seen all around the world, it's gonna sound really stupid to a lot of the planet, but we actually mass medicate our population without control of the dosage with a neurotoxin. It's called fluoride. Uh, Russia doesn't do it, China doesn't do it. You might say, well, there are people who have a lot more freedom than we do. <laughs> I'm sorry, is my sarcasm showing? Okay, so, so when you look at it, that's, it, fluoridated water is very stupid. Okay, I mean, there's, there's fluoride deception, there's multiple movies on it. Any ethical scientist is not going to support it. But the fluoride is actually binding to the receptor sites to block iodine. That's not the big nasty one. The big nasty one is the carcinogen, I mean, fluoride's carcinogen too, but bromine. Now, about 35, 40 years ago, we used to use iodine in bread to help the yeast and to, you know, process baked goods. Well, about 35, 40 years ago, they changed to use bromine. It's cheaper, you know, better. It's not good for you. But this instantly caused an iodine-deficient diet. If you don't have enough iodine, your body can't produce thyroid hormones. Well, bromine also has the added danger of it being a carcinogenic. It's a class 2 carcinogen. Okay, so all you have to do is start looking at bread products, and if it has bromine in it, you don't buy it. Okay, I mean, it's, it's really, really simple. So the chlorine that's clean in the water is killing us. The fluoride that's in the water is poisoning our, our thyroid. And the bromine in the baked goods, well, not just baked goods, but pesticides, fire retardants, sodas. I think, I, think, um, I, th I think it's Mountain Dew that has a big amount of it in. I might be wrong on that one. But it's, it's toxic. What I like, ancientpurity.com, it's Lugo's iodine, because I don't eat a lot of shellfish. I mean, I don't, and, and I, I do do body balance, which is a, a seaweed-based seaweed 
mineral supplement. I like it. A friend from England sent me this one, Ancient Purity, and it's, it's a good source of iodine. It really is. Now, now what do... Okay, see, see how this is like a lot of information? Okay, okay. It, 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 but, you know, it's like a rough overview. We can go back over everything, and we are going to cover this in future talks, but now we've got to look at the link between genetically modified organisms, vaccinations, gluten, neurotoxins, pesticides, and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Okay. Now, uh, leaky gut can cause inflammation. See, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it's a problem with the thyroid. It's one of the most common, but it's where the body attacks itself. Now, why the source of all these autoimmune diseases is the body recognizing parts of itself has, has not bad. Okay, I mean, it has bad. So it's, it's an abnormal recognition of an of a existing healthy protein as a foreign object. Uh, gluten is responsible for over 30%. This means that the gluten inside, and this is a protein in grains, and it's an abnormal protein because it's been modified. It's been modified since the 70s. So a lot of people before 1970 didn't have this because it's, it's a unique product. It's something that's never been on the planet before. Now, when we look at this food product, so if we have anything that blows holes in the gut, that means your intestinal tract is supposed to be nice and smooth. If we have anything that allows holes in the gut, you're going to get large undigested proteins floating around in the immune system. If you have large undigested proteins floating around in the immune system, the body is going to recognize those things as, as bugs, as bacteria or viruses or some kind of pathogen. And it's going to start to attack those. Well, gluten can, at can attach to parts of the thyroid, and the body will recognize that and attack the thyroid itself. Okay? So in order to heal the thyroid from Hashimoto's, you've got to go on a gluten-free diet. Okay, and not just a gluten-free diet, but we got to make sure that your gut is healed. And it's, it's also interesting that when you look at some of the Hashimoto's and Graves' disease, the, it, is Hashimoto's hyperthyroid or hypo? Say both. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad you said it. Is Graves' disease hyper, hypo, or both? Say both. Oh, oh, good, good, good. And so I'm looking at this and I'm going, wait a second. I always thought that, that Hashimoto's was more hypo and Graves was more hyper. And, and you start looking at this and you start, wait a second. The research says, well, this is generally hypo, but it has bouts of hyper. Then this one generally is hyper, but it has bouts of hypo. Remember the whole adrenal function thing? When, when you got a pain reliever and then, then the materials go down and so the function goes down? So you got to start looking at this. Has, they're, they're looking at the organ as it's organ specific, but that's totally wrong. It can't be organ specific. It's connected to everything. If you have a lot of gluten, if you have a lot of estrogens, if you have a lot of bromine or fluoride or chlorine, it's going to be toxifying the organ and it's not going to work. Your body's designed to recover from this stuff and eliminate those toxins. So if you have decreased that, you're going to have better thyroid function. So you're going to have days of good, days of bad. So uh, the gluten found, yeah, the gluten looks very similar to the protein. So when we look at this, how to correct this, and this is interesting because sometimes iodine supplements can make it worse. Iodine supplements can make it better. So what you've got to do to heal Hashimoto's and Graves is heal the gut first. I mean, this is where 20% of T3 and T4 are converted. The liver is where 80% of T3 and T4 are converted. So vitamin D is vital. Liver health is vital. Okay. Selenium supplements are vital. And we're going to go over this again. Herbs, bungleweed is great to decrease TSH production and motherwort. So that's, that's more hyper. But, but this, is, this is all in your sheets, too. Now, fluoride used to be a medical intervention for hyperthyroidism. And this was back in the 80, uh, 1800s, but it was used up till seven, uh, eight, 1970. That means if you had hyperthyroid symptoms, we would give you some fluoride. So is there any wonder, since we're fluoridating the water, why about 30% of our population has a problem with thyroid? Okay, yes, this should upset you. Okay, now, now you might say, well, I'm very, very cautious. I don't drink fluoride. Okay, how would you like to give a kid 
Six ounces of Wheaties, a little bit of milk, and then send him, send him to school with a soda. He's already had 233% times more than fluoride in that day. Okay, so do we have any kids with problems with thyroid function, with low energy, decreased energy? And when you know the thyroid function or that, that extra fluoride is also negatively affecting the adrenal and the brain function, is this criminal or criminal? No. Okay, good, just checking. Now, the EPA, that actually National Research, the NRC, they did a study in 2006, and, and is there a reason that we have 50% of our population with cancer now? Yeah, we're going to find it, because several lines of information indicate that the effect of fluoride on thyroid function, so we know fluoride negatively affects thyroid. Why are they still passing it? I don't know. Only the people in Portland are smart. They voted it down. Um, fluoride exposure in, in us humans is associated with elevated TSH concentrations, goiter, altered T3 and T4. What's the only two things that the thyroid makes mainly is T3 and T4. Uh, now, when you look at this, the effects of fluoride on various aspects of endocrine function should be examined further, particularly with aspects to the, um, with respect to the possible role in development of several diseases or mental states in the United States of America. So now, and I know, I'm sorry the slides are too wordy, okay, but I had to put it up there, okay, and I had to read it because this was actually off of the report. I mean, it, it's nuts. Then you may say, well, it's no problem. I filter my water, I don't use fluoride in the toothpaste, I'm safe. Do you ever have Dole Pineapple, loaded with fluoride, Snapple, classic, classic Coke, Hanson Soda, uh, Minute Maid Orange Juice? Okay, when you look at this, if they're using the fluoridated water to make their commercial products, that fluoride is going to negatively affect what? The thyroid. It's going to negatively affect your brain function. It's absolutely toxic. So, so let's say you went out the day before and you pounded down a six-pack of Amstel light beer and you wanted to be healthy that next morning at your blood test and you had some Minute Maid orange juice <laughs> and you washed that down with some fresh canned pineapple. Okay, then you got your blood test. Are you going to have a good functioning thyroid or a low functioning thyroid? Okay, yeah. <coughs> now soy. Soy is not a health food. In fact, it has isoflavins and goitrogens. Goitrogens means it's going to actually cause the goiter. It's linked to malnutrition, digestive stress, immune system weakness, cognitive decline, which means it slows the brain function. Same thing as fluoride. So this stuff is deadly. If it's fermented, it's okay. So like miso, tempeh, you know, that, that's, that's reasonable. But you can't do the regular soy. It's, it's incredibly toxic. Now, to diet, to correct the thyroid, You've got to normalize your blood sugar because blood sugar is going to negatively affect and it's going to be stressful. Enhance your immune system. Eliminate junk food. Why? Because of the PUFAs, the polyunsaturated fatty acids, the genetically modified organisms. You can't have junk food. It's going to kill you. Uh, and whole, you have to eat whole process, unprocessed foods. At coconut oil, fat metabolism is going to be ideal. The adrenal glands, and this is huge. Remember, they make everything. They make every glucocorticosteroid, minocorticosteroid, and sex hormone. They make everything. And their raw materials, what they make everything out of, and they're called the pharmacy of the body, they use cholesterol. So think of this. Let's say the body needs certain hormone levels. Let's say you've been under stress. The adrenals are totally worn out. And the liver knows that you need more hormones. So the body is communicating the liver to produce the raw materials. What raw material does the, adre does the adrenals use to make it? Cholesterol. cholesterol. Okay, good. So you have a patient with low energy and high cholesterol. I think adrenal fatigue. Okay, does that make more sense? Yes or yes? Okay, in dumb world, I'm sorry, not dumb world, in ignorant world, there's a difference between dumb and ignorant. Ignorant means they just don't friggin' know. Okay, you see somebody with high cholesterol and low energy, then they're going to give them a thyroid medication and a cholesterol-lowering drug when the body's actually trying to adapt. Good? Okay. <laughs> uh, stress, again, it's going to negatively affect the adrenals. It's going to negatively affect all the functions. So chronic stress increases cortisol levels. Cortisol levels decrease TSH, that's thyroid stimulating hormone, decrease thyroid function. So chronic stress is just going to wipe out thyroid. So how do you heal the thyroid? You've got to wipe out the stress. 
and it also, cortisol, obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and this is physical, chemical, or emotional stress. So what do you do to heal the thyroid? Fix the physical, chemical, and emotional stress, get it healthy nutrition. I mean, it, it, it really is simple. This right here, exercise, exercise, it, it is the greatest thing in the world. Just a half hour of exercise a day. A 30 minute walk, and I know this is too wordy, but what, the, what they're saying, one of the greatest benefits to healthy thyroid is a 30 minute walk a day. If you want to strain yourself, put a little bit of weights on your hand. But that changes thyroid function, it burns up the cortisol, it's the greatest thing you could possibly do. When you compare adrenal fatigue to thyroid problems, they match up. You're, 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 because it changes your metabolic processes, and, and I, I know it's vital. When we look at PUFAs, the polyunsaturated fatty acids, this is the corn oil, canola oil, the safflower oil, sunflower oil. This is all of the toxic oils they use in every commercial product. It clumps blood vessels together. And this is so important, I actually put an article in here, and it's, it's worded a little technical, but, but you're going to get the gist of it on polyunsaturated fatty acids. How What it does is it clumps the blood vessels together. Now this is the weird part, the, the, those oils will lower cholesterol, but it increases the stickiness of the blood. So these oils that are in there clump blood vessels together so it's unhealthy blood, which causes, if you've got thick blood, what, what do you think the pump has to do? Harder. Pump harder. So what are they going to miss bang dose with? High blood pressure. Okay, so if you have a diet high in those oils, you're going to have lowered thyroid function, you're going to have lower cholesterol, so people are going to think you're healthy, okay, but you're going to have high blood pressure. I know, so, so it's crazy, okay, that, that that's, I mean, and then you have to stabilize blood sugar. So this means, I mean, stabilizing blood sugar is really easy. Decrease animal products, decrease toxic products. When we talk about diabetes, you can actually recover from diabetes medications type 2, 95% of diabetics, in about four days to a week. Okay, so it's very, very easy. Eliminate estrogens. This means no pesticides. This means no estrogen-containing products. This means no plastic containers that are toxic. Because estrogen, again... Thyroid hormone, what binds to that thyroid protein that carries it? Estrogen, okay, along with, you know, all the other toxins. Mental health, and I like this, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access. We talked about the, now the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenals, those are three organs that function together. Stress, okay, or your perception of stress actually changes um, memory, emotions, psychological, behavioral functions, this modulates those. Now, what's interesting, deficiencies in oxytocin, okay, and this is a hormone released by the pituitary, and told, told by the hypothalamus by sensory input from the adrenals, it's deficient in sociopaths, narcissists, psychopaths, and it's present in people with love and abundance. So when you look at these, these glands are people that have emotional difficulties, that have mental disorders, is it thought of that, wow, it's an adrenal problem. Wow, it's a neurotoxic problem. Wow, it's, it's this. No, they talk stupid stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, not stupid. Ignorant stuff like brain chemistry. It's not brain chemistry. It's, it's the body adapting to stress. I mean this, Debbie, she, she literally did have thyroid medications, 13 different prescriptions, overweight, poor diet, before and after. All she had was physical, chemical, and emotional stress. You know the diet we put her on, right? No bread. Why? Because it has bromine in it. It's bad for the body. It has gluten in it, which is going to bind to the thyroid and slow her metabolic processes down. We got her to park far away in the parking lot and just walk here. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> honest to goodness, it doesn't take much. Okay, and, you know, afterwards, 13, she's actually in the, the view box over there where you're going to see her 13 drugs that she was taking. And, and remember, that's medical care in this, this, this country. This is the dark ages. If this drug, you're still not happy, we're going to give you 10, maybe 11, 12 more drugs. Do the drugs make you live longer and healthier? No, ask, your, ask your, these questions. The quality of your life depends on the questions you ask now.
This right here is on your sheet. You don't need to write this down. I know it's too busy. It's on the back half of this. This is how you heal not just the thyroid because you can't look at the thyroid problem as the thyroid. The thyroid problem is intimately connected to the, the pituitary, which is connected to the hypothalamus, which has sensory input from the nervous system and gets its information from the adrenals and the liver and the digestive tract. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, good. Oh, and also, one of the things that's on here is the herb maca. If you have hormone deficiencies, maca is like one of the best. It's a South American herb. It's something that we recommend in a lot of our shakes. It's outrageously good. So if somebody is, is approaching menopause or you have hormonal deficiencies or you've been exposed to toxicities, um, maca is, is just about the most vital herb that you can take. So this is what your body requires. I know it seems like the same thing, but I mean, to be healthy, you need to get the nervous system checked because that's how everything works. You need to get regular exercise, just a half hour a day, nutrition. Those changes in there is gonna change thyroid function. You need to get sufficient rest. That's how you deal with the stress. You need to have prayer and meditation because that actually is how the body heals itself. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, good, good. And now, Lord, this, I got to tell you, next week, uh, Janine Stewart's going to talk about healthy, beautiful skin, and I'm going to be speaking next Thursday on passionate romance in your life. <laughs> Health, how to have healthy sex secrets? What's What's interesting? Um, uh, there, there's there's an old uh, an old saying by Jack Lane. And, and you know, he said this when he was over 90, and he says, you know, I make love almost every day. And so, almost on Monday and almost on Tuesday. And <laughs> almost on Wednesday. Well, we're, we're going to talk about how physiology works. But thank you very much for making it here.